Hello guys, welcome back to Movie Reviews, the final, well, the final episode of Series 12. And today we're looking at Superhero Double Bill. Quite an interesting one, actually. Well, sort of superhero comics, whatever, you know, that sort of thing. And, yep, yeah, let's go into it. So, the first of the Double Bill we're looking at is Logan from 2017. Um, this is basically, well, it's an interesting film, since I thought it might be interesting to cover this. Um, I've seen the X-Men film, well, I've seen the X-Men films, well, a couple of them, actually, um, for, me, for a couple of, no, a number of years. I saw X2, Last Stand, and X-Men Orange is Wolverine, unfortunately. But I've never seen all the others. I've never seen the first one, the very first one. I've never seen all the others, like Days of Future Past, um, First Class, you know, and the, the ones, you know, the First Class st stuff as well, even though it's not really, pretty, really good, really, to be honest, afterwards. Um, all the Wolverine as well, actually. So... It's quite it's quite interesting actually coming back to, coming back to this film really you know because for a long while I saw I've only ever seen them films and sort of went away actually you know just watched other stuff as well so coming back to Logan was quite interesting a bit of a, a bit of a refreshing type of thing really obviously this is Hugh Jackman's last performance as Wolverine this is actually his final film to do it, to do it really, because he's been doing it since two thousand so seventeen years of playing the character so. Obviously, it's last. It's also the last one to feature Sir Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier as well, and yeah. But it's again, it's pretty interesting stuff. So let's go for this. So it, this sort of inspiration comes from the um, called Old Man Old Man Logan. This does. So it's basically uh, Wolverine, of course, Logan. Uh, very sort of quite older. Very sort of a um, to, bit of a bit of sort of like a very sort of like. Jaded, jaded state, really, to be honest. At this, you know, at this point, on the run as a, as a fugitive, sort of like one of the last many, uh, last many mutants, of course, who is living out in a farm with um, Charles Xavier, who has actually got a rare brain disease, who is and his powers are unstable, uh, so he's very, and, he's, and he's deteriorated heavily. And you've got Caliban, who's played by Stephen Merchant, Merchant who, who you remember from. Um, other stuff as well. He, went, who, he primarily works with Ricky Gervais, really. Uh, so he's there, of course. I don't think I don't think he appeared in the in the previous films. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, correct me on that one. And they've been hiding out. They have, of course, from the for uh, I think from the authorities, but also it's you know. Apparently, this takes place after days of days of future past or something like that. You know, like you know something's. Stuff's been happening. Not, into, not really entirely sure, really, in terms of the chronology. Because I'm not, uh, I don't, I haven't seen all the X-Men films, so I really don't. I'm not sure about that. Um. They so they be so they've been like fugitives. They're, they're, they're sort of like remaining incognito and also just keep keep a low profile, of course. Then they meet a girl called uh, Laura, who is played by what's it name? What's her name? Uh, I forgot the name. Fabridine. I don't. I can't remember pronounce. Remember that just name, unfortunately. Um, and she's like an like a new experiment. I think known as X twenty three. She's known as, who's basically similar to Wolverine, really, like a more sort of like a more ruthless, more stronger version. Even though she's just just like a, a kid, really. And so he has to take her under under his wing, of course, just to escape. Uh, this leads to various places, of course, um, around like the Nevada and Las Vegas, and also elsewhere. There are some interesting scenes, of course, that sort of struck me. There was, um, of, of course, Caliban gets, king, gets kidnapped by a doctor who played by Richard E. Grant, and who's basically sort of like an expert in, in the Weapon X program or something, and just basically just trying to hunt them down, really, of course. Also makes a clone, of, like a clone-like esque version of Wolverine as well, more stronger, just to fight up against. There are some good st stuff, as I need to get back to it, um, like uh, involving. Uh, Xavier's power has been unstable, which um, in a hotel room apparently like it freezes time and stuff like that, or distort, distort, or distorts time really. What what's really happening? Also, Logan's Logan's just trying to um, kill the ball, like very struggling, but also trying to case you know try and kill them really. And it's like, yes, pretty radical stuff in in that sort of, in terms of that scene. There's also the stuff where the, when Logan meets a family really and. Um, he saw, he saw, they saw, res the, uh, and he, they resides like, in a farmhouse that do, has like, like a safe house type of situation, really. And also, you've also got some other people as well just trying, trying to take, take pot shots at this guy as well, and also just, you know, like, um, 
what was it? Just trying, I think it's like hunting on power or something, or hunting for something in, outside in the in the darkness or something they were doing. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a long, been a while. It's been a few years since I seen the film. Um, and of course, you have the um, Xavier's death, which is I forgot. I forgot about Xavier's death because he gets. Um, the clone of Wolverine, or like the a super a superhuman version of more of him, really comes in, and he believes he's Wolverine, of course. Ah, you know, thinks he's Logan, but instead he doesn't, and he and, he's, and he gets completely stabbed, really. You know, you know, you know, get clawed to death. Quite sad that is. Uh, so that's Xavier's death. If you, if you haven't seen that film, just like you know, mm -hmm. I think you should stop watching. So that's and obviously the the final fight sequence, of course, between you know the Weapon X program, of course, and the Logan uh, Logan's doppelganger type situation, of course. It did feel a bit like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome towards the end, really, because uh, Logan ends up in a, like a treehouse full of new mutants who are like sort of kids, really, and it it's very similar to, in that sort of style, really. Anyway. Like you have, you have elements of like the fugitive and very sort of western type style. Then it come, then it becomes like beyond Thunderdome in some in some regards. Like same with, with Max when he ends up in the pit with uh, those ch with the children who believe he's Captain Walker. That's it, Captain Walker. I forgot I forgot what it was now. He was believe yeah, he was Captain Walker. It's been like it's all like that really in in some regards, and also end up having a good fight for the forest. Jackman's Jackman is really on top of his game in this one because here's his final one. Pretty good. James Mangold, who actually directed the Wolverine, actually returns as well. I think he also is more of a heavy, heavy sort of input as well in this one, as well. Marco Beltrami does the score. Marco Beltrami does a. Uh, so he did stuff like the Faculty. He also did Terminator Three: Rise of Machines. So he's done quite a few, decent, uh, a few many blockbuster films. So he's that. So that was ideal. Cliff Martinez was originally attached to scoring, but dropped out. I think. Because I know Cliff Martinez did some like sex type, uh, sex, was it like sex, sex lies and videotape. I think that was see this, this Steven Soderbergh film, and other few bits and pieces as well. So, yeah. But overall, it's a good film. I I didn't see this in the cinemas. I saw it on a torrent download. You know, like like you do, like you stream stuff really. So I saw it on there. With my dad, actually, because we got bored with it, so I just put this on, really. And it was really good. My mum was quite surprised, actually. Like, when she, I think it's like halfway towards the end of the third act, she said, yeah, oh, it's um, uh, X-Men, isn't it? Yes, this is his last film, of course. It's like, oh, really? Like, it's his final film, uh, yeah, last film. The death sequence of Logan is really impactful, blimey. You know, him getting imp impaled by a big, massive branch in the end, it's like, God. I mean, this is Rain 15, this is, so it's more informal adult type style really but it's really good again considering it's the final film for Stuart and Hatt Jackman as well it pays off wonderfully it's brutal but it pays off wonderfully and it does in a way and then the X-Men franchise has dwindled downwards after afterwards if you're familiar with it if you're familiar with the other ones like with Dark Phoenix and I think New Mutants as well just come out just recently actually and the final film we're going to talk about in series 12 is Joker from 2019. Yes, yes, people have been talking about this film, how great this film is, how interesting it is, wonderful. I think it's really good. Pretty good stuff. So this, it's the origins of the Joker, but not as, a, as you expected. Um, it's directed by Todd Phillips, who's probably a well-known director, of course, in a few bits and pieces. I'm not too sure. I forgot what his filmography is, but some might have to give, might have to give a look. But he's done a few interesting films, really. Um, stars Joaquin Phoenix, of course. Joaquin Phoenix, who plays a guy called Arthur Dent, who is a clown for hire, who has a what do you call it? Like like a disability of course when he, he just laughs out of context um yes and it's and obviously people just think think like you know he's like he's just completely nuts like he's off his head really and this is in the 80s this is and obviously um he uh, obviously he he gets you know trash in the street of course and he ends up getting fired because one of his workmates give him a gives him a gun that's protection and he carries it around he does and when he was in the children's hospital it's you know it drops out, and and the, and then basically the hospital and the people in the hospital just go completely mad, of course, and he ends up getting fired. Um, obviously, after he's firing over his job, of course, he gets attacked in the subway by a bunch of yuppies. He does, and ends up shooting 
three, all, all of them actually, all three of them really, in, in response because they beat the living shit out of him on, on the subway. And he basically just shoots them, really. And then gets into the inquiry, of course. And as time goes on, he starts getting a bit more heavily, de bit heavily more fixated. He sees a guy called Murray, who's played by Robert De Niro, some famous talk show host, and always wants to be on the show, of course. Really, he idolizes him. He does. And he always has weird fantasies. He does. Also, he looks after his mum, who's called Penny, and. She has a secret, she does. She has dark, she has a few motives and dilemmas and dark secrets. And, yeah, it's pretty harrowing when you look, when you look at it. Um, so let's go for some, let's go for some major things, of course. So Penny, in particular his mum, uh, abused him as a child. And I think one, one time, acting so hard, he ended up getting damage to his brain, head, a severe, like a severe head injury, and that's why he ends up having this, he's laughing out of context, his brain just makes him laugh, he does. That's the reason why he has this, you know, this disability, really, or, what do you call it, I think it, it sort, of, sort of is, really, it sort of is, really, in a way, and that's how it happens, really, in, in, in this whole thing, sorry, it's a bit warm in here. Um, um, Murray, Finds out he does this. Well, finds out this stand-up thing that Arthur did in a comedy club, and puts on live television, and basically embarrasses him. Really, like he, you know, he thinks like, "Oh, good, I'm on television. I can. That'd be pretty interesting." And he and this guy, this talk show host, is taking the piss out of him how his act, and that sort of drives him, in you know, to to the bend. Really, he finds out what his mother was like because he stole documents from the asylum or the hospital or asylum. Well, and he found some true, you know, true stuff about his mo his mother. In the end, he smothers her with a pillar. Mm. Second film to cover with um, someone someone smothering a woman with, with a pillar in a hospital. Interesting. Um, and yeah, then he goes on the show. Uh, well, he encounters the he encounters the other guys as well. The two main clown uh, clowns he actually worked with. The big guy, of course, who entered the, the gun, he ends up shooting. But the little fella, of course, little British fella, little dwarf fella, survives, of course, even though there's that interesting little scene when he tries to jump up and tries to get the lock and say, Arthur, can you get the door for me, please? And it's like, yeah, he sort of, he finds him all right, really, and so he lets him go. Then, then of course, he ends up going to the full Joker makeup in a, sort of like a reddish suit, of course, and really... And of course, gets him, you know, and so it heads down there. Even though the cops were chasing him, they found out like they think that's all. I don't know, really, that's all thing. And basically, go, you know, and basically goes on there. He assassinates Murray by shooting him in the head, of course, you know, displaying the truth. Then he starts a revolution involving clown, involving people just in clown masks, causing absolute riots with white room by cream being played over and. You know, and the the assassination of Thomas and Martha Wayne. So that's a different type of situation. Um, Thomas Wayne was obviously um, uh, appeared throughout, of course, like a sort of a main plot point with the whole thing with his, with uh, Arthur's mother. And I feels like, do you think you think like is he is Arthur Bruce Way uh, Thomas Wayne's son? Interesting, like an abandoned son or something. You know, who know who knows? It's all sort of, left to that ambiguity. It does. It's all it's all plays on that really. Um, yeah, but overall, it is, it's really good, very good acting by Joaquin Phoenix, you know, there's some fantastic stuff, the act, I think the acting in particular is really good, very good music as well, because I remember seeing this in the cinema, I think the, the recent film I saw in cinema was this, with my mum, my mum was going to see it actually, because she read a newspaper that, um, the stuff of Joker is something to do with him being abused as a child, and also featured a song by Gary Glitter in the soundtrack. I thought, and she was quite intrigued and thought, "My God, give the watch!" And I saw it was tagged along to watch it. I was really impressed with it, of course. So that was the last that was the last time I've been to a cinema actually before the whole pandemic thing came down. I was looking forward to a few other films this year. Who knows? Well, see how it goes. Actually, well, I don't know really. You know, it's questionable at the moment. But Joker. Really good film, fantastic, very dark, very mean spirited type film as well. Has some light, has some little bit of light moments, of course. My mum was laughing at his, at Joaquin Phoenix is laughing, of course, out of context. It just comes out, I don't know, but she just finds it hilarious. Even though she had a glass of wine when she was at the when she was before she sat down in the cinema, so fair enough. 
but it's a really good film. I certainly enjoyed it. It's probably worth checking out. I know people are raving that thing. It's one of the best films of 2019. Well, it really is, really, to be honest. You know, it has its, it has its sort of... It captures something of a, an, in, an interesting, like, um, thing of it, like a different feel of it, and it works nicely. That's all I can say. Everyone's said about everything else, so that's my sort of input of Joker. Thank you guys for watching. This is the last episode of Series 12. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll see you for the next video, whenever it will be. I don't know. See ya.